Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with chorizo and chicken skewers. That's right. You know how when Hollywood does a buddy movie, they always pair the dull, conservative, humorless character with the passionate, flamboyant, charismatic character? Well, that's what we're doing here, only with meat. So we're going to use some spicy chorizo sausage to make your grilled chicken skewers way, way more exciting and definitely way more delicious. So let's get started. And here's our not-so-secret ingredient, chorizo sausage. And the first thing we want to do here is trim a little bit of the ends off, which may seem like a little bit of a waste, but we want that surface area that comes in contact with the chicken to be exposed. So we'll trim a little bit off. And then I'm going to cut this in eight equally sized pieces. And the reason for that is I'm going to do four of these skewers. And I'm going to put four pieces of sausage on each one. So two sausages times eight will give me 16 pieces. Thank you, New York State Public School System. And I'm going to throw those pieces in a bowl. And then it's time to prep this soon to be way more exciting chicken breast. And just like the sausage, I know how many pieces I want on each skewer, which in this case is going to be five. So out of each one of these breasts, I need to get 10 chunks. So I'm going to start by cutting that pointy end off. There's one. And then I like to find that seam right there. See that line? And if you flip it over, you can see it kind of divides the two sides of the breasts. So I like to slice through right there. I think that just makes this easier to cut in uniform pieces. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut off that bottom piece there. So that makes two pieces. And then we'll go ahead and cut this smaller piece into three, which gives us five total. And then we'll just go ahead and cut that remaining piece into five more nice chunks, which should give us 10 total. So really the key here is knowing how many pieces you want ahead of time, and also using a very deliberate divide and conquer technique for cutting it, so you can get the right number in relatively even sizes. So I did that to two breasts for 20 pieces total, and we're gonna go ahead and add that to the bowl with our sausage. And then before we go ahead and impale these, we're gonna go ahead and season these up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some freshly ground black pepper, and then we're also going to add a nice big spoon of smoked paprika, or as I refer to it, the bacon of spices. And the one I'm using has a little bit of heat to it. Kind of spicy, so I'm not going to add any additional cayenne. In case you're wondering, which many of you are, I'm also going to give it a very small splash of sherry vinegar and a little drizzle of olive oil. Not too much. We don't want flare-ups on the grill. We're also going to need a healthy dose of salt. And then because I had it, I decided to go with a little bit of fresh oregano, which is, for whatever reason, an herb I love with smoked paprika. And then we'll go ahead and give that a thorough mixing, which you'll be enjoying today from not one to three angles. And by the way, you can season your skewers at any point, but I really think mixing it up with the seasonings like this before you start stabbing them just works so much better. So go ahead and give those a good mix. And when that's done, we're ready to move into the final phase of production. And then the only other things we're going to need are some vegetables. I'm using red onions and red pepper and some metal skewers. And I'm going to go ahead and make one to show you my system. And you can obviously do these any way you want. And I like to start with a piece of red onion at the base, and then a piece of chicken, and then a piece of sausage. And one of my strategies here is I want every piece of chicken to be up against a piece of sausage, at least on one side. That way when it's on the grill, all that beautiful, flavorful fat is going to be right next to that chicken. And then, of course, we're intermingling the occasional vegetable for color and, I don't know, let's say nutrition. And by the way, much like the human genome, I'll actually do a genetic sequencing for my kebabs. And for this one, it happens to be O-C-S-C-P-S-C-O-S-C-P-S-C-O-P. And of course, what that stands for, starting from the base to the point, is onion, chicken, sausage, chicken, pepper, sausage, chicken, onion, sausage, chicken, pepper, sausage, chicken, onion, pepper. So that's how I organize and categorize my skewers. But like I said, you do it any way you want. You are the Ben-Hur of your chorizo chicken skewer. But this works for me, and I think has the perfect proportion of meat to veggie. And again, as you can see, we use that exact same order all the way through. And once those are on the skewers, let's go ahead and wrap it in plastic. And we'll toss that in the fridge to keep it cool while we build our fire. And speaking of cool, check it out. It's a Fonzie melon. Oh yeah, it's just like a regular melon, except if you bang it against a jukebox, it plays your favorite song. But anyway, keep those skewers in the refrigerator until your fire's ready, at which point we'll head outside and put these down on a nice hot charcoal fire and cook them until done to perfection. How long is that going to take? I have no idea. I'm going to guess 10 minutes, but that really depends. I think mine took about 8 minutes here, but this fire was dangerously hot. And what I'll do is I'll place them down, and as soon as I can, I'll give them a quarter turn, and I'll just keep doing that until they're cooked evenly on all sides. So I'm pretty much standing there the whole time turning them, moving them around if I have to. And by the way, one reason we didn't put too much oil in that marinade, I don't want flare-ups. Flare-ups are your enemy. You really don't want to see flames when you're grilling. So if that starts to happen or you're just afraid things are getting too hot, close the lid. That's going to slow everything down, so don't be afraid to do that. So I continued cooking mine covered and uncovered 
until I thought they were done, which was right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull those off and pretty much eat. And unlike giant chunks of meat that come off the grill, you really don't have to let this rest. But I did want to do one close up here. And you can see, as I mentioned earlier, that every one of those pieces of chicken has at least one piece of sausage touching it, which hopefully, as you'll find out, does magical things. So I'm gonna go ahead and serve one straight away on top of a cold rice and micro arugula salad. Don't worry, it only sounds fancy. And as far as what to serve with this, so many things would work well. But I went very simple with just a lemon wedge, although a nice aioli would be fantastic. And then one pro tip, please withdraw your skewer before trying to eat this. I think you'll find you'll have way fewer puncture wounds. And then I'm gonna dig in, and I thought you'd start with the vegetables. Set a good example for the kids. All right, you hear that kids? I want you to stay in school, eat your vegetables, and get as many neck tattoos as you can afford. And while those veggies were very tasty, I quickly lost interest and headed for that chunk of chicken, which was, as predicted, incredibly delicious. I mean, obviously the seasoning helps, but the way those flavors from the chorizo kind of leak into that chicken is just a beautiful thing. And not only does that sausage flavor the chicken, you get to eat the sausage too. I mean, what a deal. And above and beyond the flavor it lends, because chicken breast is so lean, having that nice fatty sausage alongside, I think helps keep this nice and moist and extra succulent. And who among us doesn't like extra succulents? So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.